Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist and today I thought I'd do a, a quick video on the subject of slow heart rates. And um, the reason I'm doing this video is because um, quite often I come across posts um, in various forums where people have written and said, look, I felt my heart um, last night and it was only going at 60 beats per minute and I'm now terrified because I'm worried it will stop when I go to sleep and I'll never wake up again. And um, that causes a great deal of anxiety for people because they're worried about the fact that their heart rate is slow. And I thought I'd try and clarify a few issues and try and um, uh, alleviate some concerns, uh, which may not necessarily be true. Okay, so the first thing to say is, um, it is firstly really important to try and understand what the heart rate, what the number means, okay? So you can feel your heart rate by feeling your pulse. And the way we do it is we feel the pulse here in the radial artery, okay? So if you put your finger there, you'll be able to feel the pulse and just count the number of times it beats over a 15 second period and multiply it by four. And that will give you your heart rate. But then what does that number mean? Say I say my heart rate is 70. How does that differ from my heart rate being 60? And it's crucial to try and understand what this means. Then what does this number mean? Uh, and basically the idea is that the heart has a function. The function is to try and get blood around the body and to supply the vital organs. Okay, and it does so by beating at a certain rate because uh, if it is pumping a certain volume out um, around the body, then it has to pump at a certain rate to try and keep that volume going around. And um, therefore, the heart rate really is a surrogate for whether the blood is getting round. Okay. Um, and that's what the heart rate means. Uh, how fast is the blood getting round? Is the blood getting round? Now, the normal heart rate um, that uh, um, <clears throat> we consider within normal is anywhere between 40 to 100, well, no, anywhere between 60 to 100 beats per minute, okay? If your heart rate is below 60, uh, then technically it would be, called a low heart rate but that doesn't necessarily mean it's low for you okay because uh, different people are different if you've um, and i'll talk to you about causes of a low heart rate but say you feel your pulse and you feel your pulse to be 56 beats per minute okay before trying to work out what the cause of your slow heart rate is the first question that you have to ask is does it worry me to have this slow heart rate? And the answer is that if all the blood is getting around, um, then it doesn't really matter what your heart rate is. It's still managing to do the job. It's the blood is getting around. How do you know the blood is getting around? Well, if you can think clearly and if you can speak coherently, then you can be confident that the blood is getting to your brain. If you are warm to touch, uh, then you are you can be confident that the blood is getting to your skin. If you are urinating normally, then you can be confident that the blood is getting to your kidneys. And if all those things are happening, then please don't panic that your heart rate is so slow. Uh, it's clearly doing the job. You know, you can still work out why the heart rate is slow, but it doesn't really signify any danger whatsoever to you, okay? If I say to someone, oh, my heart rate is 30, um, yeah, people will start panicking. But if I'm there talking to them uh, completely well, it doesn't really matter. Now, what are the symptoms if your heart rate is really too slow for you? Well, if the heart rate is too slow for you, then one of the first symptoms that people often complain of is dizziness because the heart um, <clears throat> uh, is not beating enough blood to get blood all across the body. And the furthest point where the blood has to go is the brain. And therefore, 
dizziness would be one of your first symptoms. Secondly, tiredness. Thirdly, um, um, exercise intolerance. So the heart rate is beating, uh, but it's beating slowly. And actually, when you need it to beat faster, i.e. when you exercise, the heart is not able to beat faster because the heart rate is slow. And therefore, you will not be able to exercise as well and you'll get breathless or tired and therefore you'll have to limit how much you are able to do. In the most extreme uh, form, uh, the heart can be <coughs> so slow that it can cause someone to black out. If you're having those symptoms with a very slow heart rate, and by that I mean usually less than uh, 60 and often less than 40, then your heart rate is a problem and it needs to be rectified. But other than that, if you are not getting any symptoms, please don't be worried about what your heart rate is. Uh, then we have to ask ourselves, well, what are the possible causes of a slow heart rate? And there are lots. Uh, aging itself can cause the heart rate to slow down. So as you get older, you can, uh, uh, your heart rate will slow down. If you get fitter, then your heart rate slows down. Um, <clears throat> lots of other things happening in the body can tell the heart to slow down. So it may not be a fault with the heart itself, but if you have thyroid problems, in particular, if you are, have an underactive thyroid, or if you have any electrolyte problems with your potassium and your calcium, that can <coughs> the heart to slow down. Uh, similarly, uh, <coughs> hypothermia or jaundice can cause the heart to slow down. Then there are lots of medications that we take that can also cause the heart to slow down. In particular, things like beta blockers will cause the heart to slow down. Calcium ch channel blockers can cause the heart to slow down. Digoxin is another agent that can cause the heart to slow down. ACE inhibitors can occasionally, only in 2% of the population, but ACE inhibitors <coughs> can cause the heart to slow down. But please don't worry about that. It's worth getting investigated if your heart is below 60 beats per minute. Um, but um, it may not necessarily um, signify anything to worry about. In a relative minority of patients, particularly older patients, the heart slowing down could signify a problem with the pacemaker that God gives us to keep our heart beating. So if the pacemaker becomes um, prone to wear and tear with age, and in that setting, the heart can slow down, and it can slow down to very slow rates to, you know, 20s or 30s. Similarly, the pacemaker may be fine, but the wiring system that transmits the impulses from the top of the heart to the bottom of the heart, that can also become uh, prone to wear and tear. And that can also cause the impulses to slow down. And when that happens, um, you get something called atrioventricular block, AV block. If the pacemaker itself is um, problematic, then that's called a sinus node problem. Okay, The pacemaker is called the sinus node. If that is faulty, then you get sinus node problem. If, on the other hand, it's the wiring that, so the pacemaker itself is fine, but the wiring is faulty, then that's an AV node problem or AV block. All right? Uh, <clears throat> so a lot of people say to me, well, <clears throat> what happens if that happens? If you have a problem with your heart, if your, sire, if your pacemaker isn't working, do you drop down dead? And the answer is no. Almost uh, that is incredibly rare. Even if you have a major pacemaker problem, what tends to happen is the heart can slow down excessively. The blood can go without, uh, sorry, the brain can go without blood for a few um, seconds. And when that happens, the patient blacks out. And that blackout could result in injury but often after the patient has blacked out, they often regain consciousness. So the reason people put in pacemakers is not because they're worried that you will, you know, your heart will stop and you will never recover from it, but it is more to do with the fact that your heart may slow down and for that period of time, your brain would be without blood and you could black out 
and therefore you could sustain an injury. And that is particularly relevant if you're, if you're someone who is a driver, because that could happen when you're driving. And that's why pacemakers are put in. So, um, you know, pacemakers are not put in because you're worried that someone is going to drop down dead. That's not why we put in pacemakers. In fact, we know that from putting in pacemakers, we know that pacemakers don't prolong life, but they reduce the symptoms. They take away the symptoms of black blackouts and collapses and dizziness. It's also worth noting that in the very young patients, you can get very, very slow heart rates, and that can be a completely normal physiological phenomena. Okay. Uh, very young patients may get things called uh, venke back block, which is a type of AV block, uh, but that can be completely normal. So in young people, we don't tend to be too worried when we see very slow heart rates. And, <clears throat> but in older people, uh, we do tend to recommend pacemakers. Of course, it's important to look into the patient's history and make sure that they don't have any other things that could be slowing the heart down. But if, despite removing anything that could be slowing the heart down, correcting any abnormalities that could be slowing the heart down, you still find that the patient is feeling dizzy or the heart rate is slowing down to the extent that they're getting symptoms, then we would recommend a pacemaker. In the elderly, again, if you have no symptoms of, yeah, of a shortage of blood, you don't need a pacemaker, all right? Um, what else um, could I tell you about this? This is pretty well much it for the time being. So, um, um, so my message really is, please don't worry about the number, okay? Um, even if the number is very low and you're getting symptoms, don't worry. Nothing terrible is going to happen to you um, there and then. All you need to do is go and get it checked out, all right? It may be something very easy, like some medication that you're taking, or worse comes to worse, it may require a pacemaker, which is no big deal, which takes about 20 minutes to do and um, will sort your problem out. And that is only in the case of the patients who are quite elderly or who have a previous uh, problem with their heart. Um, but in the young, you certainly don't need any of that. All right. Um, so I hope this was useful. Um, I'll try and do some more videos again tomorrow. Uh, but in the meanwhile, I wish you all the best. Uh, it's Boxing Day, so I hope you've had fun. And I'm going to uh, just give you my Facebook page and my Twitter page. And for those of you who want to contact me, you can do so on www.yourcardiology.co.uk. And uh, there's a page which opens up which says, you know, um, speak to me. And you, if you click on that, then you can um, uh, make an appointment to speak to me. Um, and that's about it. So thank you very much and all the best. Bye.